interrupting the streaming. Here it comes. Hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Camp Divi. Howdy and good day. Good day. Good day. We're talking about some... Uh, it's not quite hot off the presses. Some newer Marvel movies we've been putting off for a while. I happened to watch one this weekend, and you watched one recently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just watched the uh, Doctor Strange Madness of His Multiverse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, it was not what I was hoping for. I had even heard uh, some bad reviews of it, mm-hmm. and I was expecting to maybe be more into like the effects of it and like the action. Um mm. But it had like this like plastic feel that I don't even, mm. I can't even describe. Plastic. Hmm. Like an action figure. <laughs> yes. Like an action figure. <laughs> I mean, they're probably trying to sell some action figures. That's fair. They definitely are. For sure. Because, I mean, Multiverse of Madness is definitely, little kids definitely love that movie, right? Like seven-year-olds <laughs> like, yeah i was gonna say my kids didn't uh, you know they didn't stick with it um i think two out of the five of us that watched it stuck mm. through to the end wow and it was uh my wife and lucia <clears throat> yeah 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 but it, that's the, i was joking because it's not really like four kids but it's not really adult like there's some adult things in it but we'll get into it but yeah and i saw wakanda forever and um, just kind of threw it on and was going to get some work done and uh, off to the side, you know, just kind of multitask a little bit. I ended up pausing it and just doing my work and then getting back to it because it was captivating, but in all the wrong ways. Um, oh, no. But it, it was captivating. I will say that. Um, but it was about an hour in. I paused it and was like, yeah, I'm just going to work on this spreadsheet because that sounds about as fun as this movie is right now (laughs) so it was weirdly uh boring and drawn out but also like i was very engaged with it because i I was trying to like pick apart the thematically what was going on there was a lot going on so we'll get into it but uh Hmm. you want to start with multiverse i guess so dr strange sure yeah um i guess i'll start out with the how I think like the audience was meant for this. I think Mm. this movie, uh, like you said, it had, uh, it was hard to call it a kid's movie, but it was also not very mature in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's hard to pinpoint what the target audience really was. Um, but I would say I wouldn't want a kid much younger than 10 uh, watching this because just of some of the confusion of like Doctor Strange and the Scarlet Witch and there's a lot of like moral confusion in a way mm-hmm. when they're with their characters. Um, so I think you know that's one thing as a parent when I'm watching it I'm thinking that a lot is like what the hell like is their message yeah. here for kids right how are they digesting um, it yeah Mor- moral confusion kind of sums up. Mar- uh, phase four of Marvel in general. Yeah. It, it, it felt like that. Like, um, you know, right from the beginning, Dr. Strange is in one dimension forced to make a decision. And this is like a pivotal plot starting, uh, moment, which ends up being in the dream of the Dr. Strange. We're going to follow in another universe. Um, But this first Doctor Strange uh, basically is facing the end of the known multiverse and is forced with the decision to take uh, America Chavez's power uh, onto himself, which will kill her to save the universe. Mm. And he makes that decision and it goes badly because the enemy ends up easily defeating him somehow before he can use the magic very simply. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, he wakes up in a cold sweat in our Dr. Strange's universe. Mm. And, you know, basically yada, 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 a lot happens. And then the (laughs) end of the movie, 
this same dilemma happens again, which you pretty much know it's going to the whole movie. Right, right. And this time, Doctor Strange decides, I'm going to not take your power, even though you've never shown that you can control your power. And even though we have literal moments to save the known universe, I've learned to trust you, America Chavez, as my friend mm, or something. Mm. So I'm going to let you try to make this work. And she does. Um, but I just thought it was not a very meaningful message. Like nothing in real life is like that where you just like aren't equipped to do something. And so like someone who's more experienced than you at it has to do it. Like being an electrician or something. Like, if you're brand new at it and you're going out messing with high voltage all the time, if you don't know what you're doing, the person in charge, because your feelings are hurt, isn't going to, like, put you in charge of, like, disconnecting the high voltage wires when you're brand new. And that's kind of what this would equate to in the real world. That's a good analogy. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just something that whenever you try to compare this scenario to the real world, it's it shouldn't end like this. And the message shouldn't be that uh, children like you really can do whatever you want and have the experience and ability to do anything um, that you see other people can do or something. Right. And to further that analogy, if you were working with your apprentice electrician and it was like, if we don't fix this power grid, the entire multiverse will collapse. Mm, and every exactly. living being in every universe will die. You don't. And it, it's like to fix this. I need your I need you to die. Right. So, yeah, like that's the moral confusion, because like at the beginning, they're showing this first Doctor Strange like he was the bad guy. Um, right. He even looks kind of sinister. Yeah, I forget what that version's called. It's like Intruder Strange or something like that. But it's supposed yeah. to be like a yeah, darker version or something. Yeah, but it's you. You kind of are like okay. Like he chose this because he believed it was the right thing to save the yeah. entire multiverse. Right, right, right. Like it's, it's a very extreme version of the train dilemma, mm-hmm. where like you've got a track. If you pull the lever, train goes one way, leave it goes one way. So like if it goes down one way, it'll go off a bridge and kill everybody on the train. But if you pull the lever, it'll go left and kill the one person who's Mm -hmm. laying on the track. It's like day one philosophy 101 dilemma. It's like obviously you pull the lever. That's what you got to do. Right. Right. Yep, exactly. And this is like, you Gotta know, pull the lever. it's not that she's not likable. Like the actress who's America Chavez uh, does a fine job. Yeah, she's yeah, likable. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And her character is kind of cool, like in terms of the cinematic uh, uh, universe, taking a comic book character who was already pretty cool, like America Chavez. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they did fine with portraying her. It's just the story arc was so flimsy and like there was no like backbone to that i i liked her so it's been a while since i watched it It was probably half a year ago or so and i thought she was good but there's not a lot of character development right right yeah it's just kind of like they just kind of get in there and i mean i said this is what happens in the beginning yada 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 here's the end but (laughs) that describes this movie so well yeah yeah yeah. it's just like what does any of this other stuff need you're like, what do I need out so of this middle? So much of it is so forgettable. Yeah. Yeah. And it, okay, oh. I have to get into it. Mm-hmm. Do it. So, Doctor Xavier from X Men. Oh was my in god. This. Mm-hmm. And I mean, X Men is probably my favorite superhero franchise mm. uh, or like group. I I always loved that story growing mm-hmm. up. Um, and Xavier's the man. Like even when you realize in the future, like. Magneto had some thoughts that might have worked out better than Xavier, et cetera. When you mm-hmm. see how things play out, you, you still always know that Xavier is a good guy. Like he's trying to do the right thing and he's also super powerful. He's like the most badass psychic in this story. Mm-hmm. And he ends up coming up against the Scarlet Witch for like a couple moments yeah. in this movie. Yeah. And she just like, obliterates him with this like feminine sneer 
Like, yeah, she's literally in her pajamas. Yeah. She's in her pajamas taking on Dr. Xavier. Yep. With, like, very little effort to defeat him. Which, on the one hand, they are showing you that the Scarlet Witch is, like, unreasonably powerful. She can just change reality. She's... Correction. Apologies. But she's in jeans, so oh, it's okay. a fair fight. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, it's just... You know, it's again Marvel, uh, which is now part of Disney, um, sacrificing a great character who's already existed in so much successful film Mm -hmm. that they've had, the X-Men films. Legendary. And they're just going to make him seem like such a bitch. Yep. And I hate it. It's another example of that. She just killed, and he's the last of... The group of people that she's killing. What are they called again? The I don't. I'm not familiar with this part of Marvel, but um, the Illuminati. Oh, it was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Mm, Mister Fantastic. uh, Mm. Yeah, there's a bunch of people there that she kills all of them easily, and he's the last one. Yep. And and she's in his realm too. Like yeah. It's he, like his mind space. Yeah, right. Which is like, this is his battleground. It's mm. like, no, no. So, yeah. I mean, knowing a lot about the universe here, there's a lot of parallels in this scene between Xavier fighting his own son in other timelines. Uh, mm. Legion. Legion, yeah. Legion is the most comparable in terms of power to the Scarlet Witch. Because he can basically mm. shift reality as he sees fit. Mm-hmm. But Legion is, well, they're both mentally unstable, but Legion is like really, <laughs> really crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, right. you know, it's funny, that it's or maybe ironic that the two most powerful characters I can think of in uh, actually any superhero universe are the Scarlet Witch and Legion, because mm-hmm. they're just changing reality as they see fit Mm -hmm. um so this there was a lot of parallels in this fight between him fighting his son which i've seen uh played out a few times um but this it just it hurt in within this cinematic universe they should have taken more time with xavier to give him an epic battle if they were going to kill him like this something epic It, it it was uh I cringed so hard when it happened. I couldn't believe it. And and he's trying to help her. Right. That's the worst part is like she defeats him by like tricking him into trying to help her. I I think it's her like good side that he's helping. And then it's her evil side that comes in behind him. Yeah. Uh, She's on her period. It could have been a trick though. Yeah. The red cloud is coming. The red storm. That was it. Oh my God. It's so terrible. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, she just snaps his neck. Oh, <laughs> mm. kudos to this actor though. He's cool, cool cameo. Even though they kind of like killed him, I still like him as an actor. Oh, Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Oh yeah, great. That's but awesome. he agreed to this, so you know, I know. A, a little bit of a tisk tisk right here for Ugh. him though. Oh, terrible, terrible. But uh, yeah. So she. She's got her own problems. I th- I think they're more her problems exist more in the Vision, the WandaVision show. Yeah. In the movie, it's a little more straightforward. She's bad. She's a baddie, but mm-hmm. um yeah, I, I mean, cuz you you guys didn't watch WandaVision, right? Maybe you and No, I did. Leah did. Uh, my kids did too, actually. Oh, okay. We all watched that yep. at separate times. Yeah. And I think the world over at large would agree with that. It started off strong and then that is the general consensus. Apart. I loved it. I loved the first three, maybe four episodes. Same. Thought it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but the moral confusion around yeah. Wanda was such a train wreck. Um, yeah. Oh, it? it still existed in this movie. That, mm-hmm. So the other uh, thing I would talk about for kids that are watching this and that it would be confusing is like Wanda is the whole plot of this movie is that she's trying to figure out a way to like get kids that she knows now exist in another dimension with another version of herself. And so yeah. 
she's trying to get there to steal these children from herself. And even at the end of the movie, when she accomplishes getting to that universe and she attacks herself at that moment, she realizes she's been bad and that this whole quest for the whole movie, everything she's been doing was a bad idea. And like she understands herself as she looks at herself on the ground bleeding from the attack she just did. Like that. And then she just kind of walks away at the end of the movie, right? I mean, the Scarlet Witch is fine at the end of this, as far as I can tell, right? Oh, she's coming back, yeah. 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 So it's just, but there's no like even repercussion. She's not in like a fucking eternal jail or mm. something like that. Like she's just like off to fuck reality up again sometime a lot of their stuff's having this problem where it's like i think introducing the television series to the universe is uh, making it worse where it's like they're expecting people to not have seen all of it so mm. it's almost like episodic television where it resets yeah we'll get into it but uh black panther has this problem in a serious way where it's like the first movie didn't happen or at least the character character development in it um didn't happen they don't play out in the next movie you know what i mean yeah so they're having this problem a lot they're gonna have it with loki and they're gonna have it with with everybody yeah i mean this i guess is the last thing that i'll say about this one before we move on then um is that so with that confusion and stuff one of the things that is going to become more and more confusing in this universe for children is that they keep showing the same character in multiple different versions. Mm. So they're showing Dr. Strange as a good character and a bad character. Mm. They're showing the Scarlet Witch as a mother who cares about her kids. And they're also showing another version of her that shows up and destroys that. Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for a very young child, Um, you know, I'm saying, I don't think kids under 10 and, you know, depending on the kid, maybe later should watch this, but a lot of parents, you know, this is on Disney plus Mm -hmm. and their kids are watching it. They're four five, six, whatever. And they don't necessarily make all those distinctions between this is, (laughs) this is Wanda from this universe. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like that's a problem with this universe now is that they're too much, uh, playing with the multi-dimensional doppelganger thing yep but they're not like making the moral messages strong enough for that to work so since mm. there's so much moral ambiguity it's kind of like how does the kid process like who's a good character who's a bad character mm. um yeah it's a good point so. it's, it's also diluting the what these characters could be as like modern mythology they could all be representative of a particular personality of a particular person but right then when you have the multiverse thing come into it it's like now they're not really representative of a thing they're more mm. you know they're they're not supposed to be that human you know there's differences like tony stark is very different from thor thor should be thor is a he's a demigod right <clears throat> yeah and so he's meant to like his character is meant to kind of represent something, but mm-hmm. now he's just kind of like a dude. Um, whereas Tony Stark is always a dude, you know? Right. So, you know, there, I think the first two phases were, uh, maybe three even, um, where they were, it was modern mythology and now it's just kind of like, it's just all muddied and, it's yeah. not, yeah. It's like commercialized to like such a crazy extent now mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, like they have like certain expectations going in. Oh, for sure. And for you sure. just feel that throughout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all community scripts. So this yeah. is a Sam Raimi movie. He's a legend. He, uh, he's most known definitely for the original Spider-Man trilogy Ooh, with yeah. Tobey Maguire. Classic. Classic, yeah. And he's got a... Um, he's a legendary horror movie filmmaker. Mm. And, uh, mm. so he wanted this to be a horror movie. He said it was going to be the first horror movie in the Marvel universe. And they oh. definitely muddied that, you know, you know, they come in, they rewrite and they reshoot and 
everything just gets all messed up. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't seem like a good fit either, though, as a horror movie. Unless you're going to rate it like R and just go Unless for you're going to go all the way. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like, you're just mm-hmm. giving the wrong impression. Most parents nowadays, and, and I'm maybe exaggerating, but I think this is true. I think most parents see PG-13 as like, eh, okay. You yeah, know, like, like how bad could it be? Yeah, and but like, you know, a horror movie for kids is... Not necessarily the way to go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, I I know there were a lot of problems with it I had while watching. Um, just as far as the plot and the powers, because all of the mm. like Wanda is way too powerful now. She's way too powerful. Yeah, and Doctor Strange has particular strengths that he doesn't use a lot of the time. So, for instance, in the opening scene when he's fighting that big monster with uh chavez Mm -hmm. he has a sling ring on that whole time uh and he doesn't use it so there's things like that where it's like you have a sling ring you could open up a portal you could have like you know i've I've always found dr strange to be inconsistent like that yeah his usage of his powers is more like to fit like how much they had in the budget than like how Oh, it's the end. plot. It's it's definitely right. to protect the plot. It's like plot devices. Yeah, because yeah. it's like he, he, him and Wanda could just run through all of these problems that come up to them um, in ridiculous ways. Like, I don't. Does Wanda even have to fight all of those guys? Like, can't she just do some crazy witch thing and just kill all of them instantly? You know, Probably. it wouldn't be very fun to watch. But couldn't she just do that? I don't know as much about her. Um, I've really seen her the most in the newer I th- I cinematic think, universe. Yeah. I think she's she might be the most powerful Avenger. No, uh, Captain Marvel is probably the most powerful Avenger now. Mm. But Wanda's up there, though. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see them fight. But, but yeah, Doctor Strange, too. It's just inconsistent. And it's all... It's just whatever the plot needs from him, he can do. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what did you say that the... Uh, budget was for this one 200 million so 400 million (laughs) yeah so that's the other thing is like i'm watching some spectacular animations that are done by teams of people uh you know these graphic effects very talented people and like i said it just felt plastic like Mm -hmm. i'm talking about the effects in it and I know it's high level i'm watching it and i can't even distinguish what makes it look cheesy to me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it looks cheesy mm-hmm. um and i i don't know how like is it just the story is cheesy so that's why it's like that or is it like too much effects i was wondering because yeah. a lot of the scenes were a lot of effects at once mm-hmm. i don't know i don't know i don't know it could be all of it it could mm-hmm. be all of it but mm-hmm. i i do remember this one looking kind of plasticky um you got a way to put it. Oh, there you go. There's a good little. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but the when we get into it, like I thought Wakanda looked very good. <clears throat> I thought a lot of Black Panther looked good. But there's certain shots, kind of like the one we just saw in this trailer, um, where they're like, oh, it's a quick shot. Don't spend too long on it. And the guy making it's like, uh, you know, the, mm. the, <clears throat> comp- the, uh, comping everything together is just not not very good but you know i would make it clear that's not really on the artist um as much as it is the production company right pushing it and um they just don't have enough time so <clears throat> um, makes sense. that makes sense they're, they're all definitely very very talented people people working on these movies are at the top of their game for sure um they so i would definitely not want it to sound like that's on them um it's it's a time constraint situation yep no that makes sense i mean that's yeah it's something that i can't even pick up on the specifics of right right so i know which goes to show like a lot of it's really good yeah a lot of it's very good for Um, sure there's just moments where you're like "Eh." like i know i still haven't seen it i don't know if i I don't care to, but I probably should at some point. Avatar 2. Um, I, mm. I bet you every second of that movie looks just as good as the last. You know, I bet it all looks amazing because they mm. spent 
like literally a decade on it. So, yeah, I would like to watch that one eventually too. <coughs> I, I really enjoyed my experience of the first one. The way it looked uh, was mm-hmm. something totally wild to me. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. second time viewing the first one, I couldn't even make it through it. It was like boring and yep. like drawn out. Mm-hmm. But um, yep. we'll see if the next one has that feeling. It might just be because like seeing that world for the first time is more immersive and yeah and that was a while ago go better that was a while ago too we've had a lot of cgi fights since then we've seen a lot of stuff since the first one came out so for sure um we've said it before like i think all that stuff is gonna people are gonna be losing more and more interest in the big fights the big big cgi stuff it'll probably recenter into a more plot driven character development I would, I would like more character development that would be nice that would be nice it's kind of like what makes a good movie so yeah i would sure. like some more of that but yeah doctor strange um one of the other things i remember about this movie is his character is such a jumbled mess now he yeah. is well, like his role in this movie is um really confused and like the wedding, you know, like the, when he goes to the wedding and it's his ex's wedding and he's all like sad about it and just, so he's got like this whole thing we're supposed to feel about, it's it's similar to Captain America where he left his love behind so he could save the world and, um, and then he's got the other thing going on where he's trying to balance his, he's very pragmatic and he's, mm. he's like, um, we saw with him interacting with Tony Stark, how he has a different perspective on his responsibility and he will make sac- the hard sacrifice to do what's needed. And this movie is supposed to be like, oh, like he softened up a little bit. Like he wouldn't sacrifice a young girl to save the multiverse. I just don't even agree with that. I don't. Mm. I, I think it's kind of silly. So. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, that's like the main issue with this whole movie. And it's what the whole thing hinges on because it's the beginning and the end. Um, like, right, with, right. You know, it's the main point and it's just not a good point. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Agreed. Well, um, I would say I, I didn't think it was super woke or anything like that. I'm like, uh, no. The old Black Panther here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, no, I didn't feel that from Doctor Strange, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I would give this like a C plus. I wouldn't even give it in the B's. Yep, yep. Someone could watch it. C but... plus is kind of high. I mean, that's <sighs> that's the thing with the grading. I'm not sure because like is F the mm-hmm. as low as you go or I don't know. Well, I guess if I was putting, let's say the scale is that I would put like. Um, it's zero, some of the zero older to ten. Marvels like Captain America at like a mm. B plus or a B it's for so sure. This is like at least a grade lower. Yeah, that's still kind of high. Like Captain America, mm. that first Captain America is a really good movie. It's a it's a it's a great movie. The character development is so solid and mm-hmm. distinct and gradual. And um, I don't know, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, these are, maybe kind of, these are jumbled minus. messes. I mean, C is like I could enjoy watching it, and I mm. could enjoy watching it. It mm. got slow. Would you watch it again? No. So three, that's almost three B's hours. These are I would watch it again for me. C's are like I would rewatch a C, not the next yeah. week, but in a year or two. You know, maybe you I'd rewatch throw it on again. movies more than the I do. Movie, though I do. The second time watching is so interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I do like re- a rewatch, but like I, I'm gonna rewatch Wakanda Forever sometime. That, that that's not as much like I'm not going to watch Multiverse of Madness again because I just don't remember it being very interesting and like it wasn't making me think about stuff. Wakanda Forever made me think about a lot of different stuff. It wasn't what the movie was trying to say or do or like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was just it was interesting and there was a lot going on. Um, so I, I would watch Wakanda forever again, but like, mm. it would be a while from now, like maybe in a couple of years, I'll be like, Oh yeah, I'll, I'll throw that on, you know? Mm. And I also do like, if I'm working on the computer on some stuff, like Photoshop or doing something like that, like I'll have a movie on off to the side. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but the, one of the, the things with 
what we're doing we started to, to try and do this with house of the dragon but like a scene by scene breakdown that's the only way you can really know because a lot of it is so it happens so fast and you're you have an, an emotional evolution that's going on through the story so with tv and film like the only way to really know how good it is is a scene by scene breakdown and a lot of things come to the surface we could spend an hour easily talking about the first scene of multiverse easy oh, yeah because there's a lot happening and we would have to like re like we'd have to go through dr strange's character and like okay what do we know about him where did it start where did it end the last time we saw dr strange where was his character like what was his mindset going into this what is he like and mm-hmm. putting that in perspective with this film and like there's a lot to a lot of to be done with that um we, on one hand, aren't going to spend the eight or nine or ten hours to do that with any given movie. Um, but luckily, some people do. I, I would say if anyone wants that, EFAP is the way to go. Um, they, I mean, it is just, I think it's a superior form of, of, criticism, of film criticism because it's so thorough. It's just so mm. thorough. So that's just not what we're doing. We're doing more of like, we're just talking about it. But um, I say that to say, like, I think if we did that with this movie, your grade would go down a lot because it would be like, oh, my God, like, you know, just a lot of stuff that we're not picking up. I think we'd have to do it as categories, too. Like, Mm -hmm. that could give a better overall of like almost like the Oscars oh, and, that we're mm, giving out. Mm. So it's like, okay, this is... That might be a good way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is how you rated it for lighting. This is how you rated it yeah. for uh, acting. cinemography. Because a lot of the acting is great. Yep, uh, the like, acting was great. Costumes yeah. were wicked cool. Yep, yep. So um, that, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. You know, the music was cool, I thought, actually. Mm-hmm. I thought it sounded pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, there was multiple scenes where the sound of a character flying in or of the effects happening yeah. sounded yeah, yeah. pretty darn cool. Yep, that makes sense. Um, the visuals were pretty good, but they, you know, like I said, some plasticky, you would knock it down. But mm-hmm. that would be a good system if we had like a checklist. I think you're right. The story on this one was just so low. Right. And, that, and the that's, dialogue. That's the main thing. Yeah, that, that's yeah. everything hinges on that. So you're right. Um, little things like, oh, I didn't realize he has a sling ring. This whole scene could end any second. But he mm. they made him stupid for this five minute fight scene because they needed a five minute fight scene. That's crippling. I don't know. It's, it's what like are you a, talking about with this sim ring? I don't. think The sling I ring is that two finger ring he he has on. Sometimes, sometimes he doesn't have it on. Sometimes he has it on in parts of a scene and doesn't have it on in parts of the scene. That's what he opens pearls with. So oh. it's like that opening. I think it's in the opening fight. Actually, he has it on in some shots and doesn't have it on in other shots. That's oh. that's crippling. Weak that's, sauce. That's really. That's not like a contrived, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that it's just, you know, again, this costs $400 million. It costs $400 million. I know that it must be so frustrating to the people who spent $400 million to have a guy who doesn't have freaking, I don't have socks on right now. And it's like, I know that it, it must bug them that a couple of random dudes can just be like shitting on their four hundred million dollar movie. It's like, well, then make it better. You yeah, have you real. built a character over the last how long has he been around? A decade now, I think. So, Doctor Strange probably yeah. the first one probably came out probably 2012, 2013, I would bet. I think it's twenty twelve. So you have you've been building this character for <clears throat> ten years. He's been in four or five movies, and you can't figure out what powers he has at any given time. It's not that it's not that it's that you, you know, he can't have the powers you gave him all the time. And so it's just kind of like there's, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, the comics run into this same problem. Um, for sure. Okay. Right. Later that you get into it for sure. Of course. But (laughs) just because a comic book has a problem doesn't mean the film can have a problem too. Yep. Like if, a character doesn't make sense in a comic book or even something simpler. Say something looks stupid in the comic book 
and then they're like, because this happened with Wakanda Forever. There's <laughs> there's something in the comic books that they apparently made super uh, comic authentic, you know, with uh, the bad guy. He's got winged ankles and it looks super silly. It's like, well, that's how it looks in the comic book. And so I looked up a picture and it's like, yeah, that looks really silly too. You know? Yeah. It's like, well, that's fine. Like I, so why are you changing a through X? But then the other couple things you're like, oh, well that's super accurate. It's just like Mm -hmm. how it was in the comic. And it's like, well, nothing else is like how it was in the comic. You changed everything else. So, you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, for sure. It's like, so it like, I, I don't know the comic books and I'm just looking at it from, from the movie side, but, um, you know, well, yeah, you have like an hour and a half to show people or two hours to show people, um, you know, everything that you can to build a story. And they're mm-hmm. just like choosing some of the worse applications for it. And the dialogue is sometimes awful. Like sometimes, Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. is so good. I love him. He's great. Um, I, I probably he's said great. his name wrong, but I like him. <laughs> and he's a great actor, but like nothing can save this dialogue. Right, right, right. It's yeah. just so bad. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh well kinda was the same way where it was I think all the actors are giving a pretty good performance. Except for one, ironically, who got like a uh, Oscar nomination for, for best supporting actress, but which um, one was that? I, I forget her name. I'll I have it up here. On, She's uh, IMDb. the chick with the spear. It's the queen. Oh, the queen. Um, Angela Bassett, and it's just funny because I thought she gave the worst performance, and, and like it wasn't that bad, but it was too much. It was a little too much, a little bit too much. Just like uh, I don't know, and she got an mm. Oscar nomination. It's like what? I I think uh, it's it's almost insulting. It's almost insulting. It's like really she she deserved an Oscar nomination for this. Like, you know, there's something it's the uh the lo- the bigotry of low expectations kind of thing. There's like I'm sure you could have found a better supporting actress performance than this. But I I'm going into it, I didn't know. I went into it thinking Oh, this is going to be her performance is going to be pretty strong. She did get an Oscar nomination, and then watching it was like, what? what? Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, uh, Letitia Wright, who plays Shuri, I thought she did a better job. I thought Lupita yeah. Nyong'o, who plays Nakia, super strong. Okay. Uh, um, oh, Nakia was in this one. Yeah. 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 Uh. Um, there's a number of actresses in this movie that did a better job. I thought I liked Dominique Thor. Uh, she did a fine job. Her character isn't, there's not much to her, but she did fine. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so I guess we could get into it. I guess we're kind of yeah transferring over. I'm While we're uh, transfer of it, power. What about the, uh, the guy who was in the first one, the white guy who was like a pilot? Um, in the Martin sh- Freeman? Yes. He played, uh, you know, Bilbo Baggins? Yes. Was he in this one? He was. Yeah. Nice. He's I liked the, him uh, in the last one. Yeah, and he's good. He's good. Yeah. He he plays his role perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> he's not being too goofy, but at the same time he, he knows like he's there he's um you know, he he's not being too goofy, he's not being too serious, he plays it good. But they call him the colonizer multiple times, which was it's just crazy. But um so Getting into it, like, I would say a couple of positive things I noted uh, to kick to, to it off. I thought the music was really cool. I liked it in the first movie as well, but even more so this time. They brought back some of the themes. And they added to them. They got some new stuff going on. The music was cool. Um, there's a couple of, like, um, not original pieces, but, like, cool radio songs you would hear that they put in that were like a little cheesy but it maybe that's just my personal preference uh i thought the music was generally really cool um the director i think he's great i think he has good framing i think he gets great performances out of people um i don't know about his writing which we'll get into but i was like watching i'm like yeah you know you do a good job i I'm not sure what else he's done. I, I've only seen Black Panther in this. I, I know he's written and directed both. Um, hmm. And so 
and like I said, the I thought most of the performances were really good, really good. Uh, I have a question: mm -hmm. Is so Shuri her, uh, or I mean Black Panther from the first one? Mm. That's his sister. Did you say that she becomes the new Black Panther? Yes, yeah, that's like in the last half hour of the movie. She I does. I, sorry, I thought that would have been from the beginning. So there wasn't like a Black no, Panther. No, like the in whole movie. The movie. She oh. she's she has one fight at the end of the movie. So oh, weird. The whole movie, they're like, there is no more Black Panther. He died. And I was like, well, I like, okay. So that that's all I really need to say as far as the pluses. And those are those are, you know, those are big things. Like you got the actors doing a good job. All right? You got like the framing, lots of cool shots, and lots of, lots of sets looking good. The costume design is awesome. The set design is awesome. I think the art design all around was really good, really cool. Lots okay. of cool costumes and. Everyone's very distinct. The bad guys look cool. All that stuff's great. Mm. I wouldn't have changed any of that. Um, so, again, like, the artists involved in these movies are so talented. They're so, so good. Right. And I I wouldn't, you know, it, I, I'll say it lots of times as we do these. Like, it's with the writing. It's the right. writing that really, like, that's where my criticism is at. So, the, the actors, they're doing their job. The art, the artists involved, they're doing a great job. Um, Did you think it looked as good as the first one? It looks better. It oh, looks wow. better. Yeah. I, I think the first one looks good, too. Yeah. There's moments of CGI that are like, oh, God, damn, uh, like really bad <laughs> moments. But again, um, time, time constraints. Um, so like, uh, so getting into it, Wakanda is people have this idea of Wakanda and it's become mythologized and now it's used as a verb and it's used as like all it's used to mean all sorts of things it's a very popular outside of the Marvel universe people talk about Wakanda um, Wakanda is a politically stone-aged dictatorship full of xenophobic tribal racist that's what wakanda is that's what it is there isn't one line from either of these movies to that show anything otherwise every every little thing we know about wakanda is exactly that it's a stone-aged xenophobic dictatorship full of run by racists and like uh, if you if you put Wakanda in Ireland, like this, there would be a problem. People would have a problem with this movie if Wakanda was like north of Dublin. So um, that that's my Wakanda makes no sense to me. It doesn't make any sense how they run the they run Wakanda the way they do, and then the the every. Every word that they utter about the outside world, which is the Western world, they're not talking about like South Africa. They're not talking about like Zimbabwe. They're talking about America and France. Those are the two countries named outside of Wakanda. The, the two countries that are players in this movie outside of Wakanda are America and France. Mm. And they, it's dripping mm. with resentment. They resent it. And again, every single line is is pointing in that direction is it because america and france were the first countries to abolish slavery <laughs> well i would not bring that up that would be that well so it doesn't make sense to me either. i don't think most people who are huge like the um i think a lot of people do know this but like the western world didn't invent slavery the western world ended slavery and i think a lot of the people though that are the type to be like, we was kings and we would have a Wakanda by now if it weren't for the colonizers. Don't understand that every single slave that ever ended up in Egypt or Saudi Arabia or France or England or America, every single one of them without exception was first captured and sold by another black African person. I I, th I honestly think they don't know this. And it's really funny because, spoiler, uh, this is, you know, big spoiler for the movie, but the 
there are two tribes in this movie now. There's, we have, uh, well, there's multiple tribes around Wakanda that we know about, but it's, it's Wakanda and their neighbors versing basically like an Atlantean hidden civilization um, who are based off like they're Aztecian. They're, they're like Ooh. secluded underwater. Nobody knows about them. Wakanda didn't even know about them. And they have vibranium. And oh, wow. The, so it's like, oh, Wakanda, uh, the Wakanda people are like, oh, there's this the people here that are hiding underwater and they have vibranium too. And then the, the people come, the, the leader of the Aztec tribe, I, I forget what they're called, um, what their like tribe name is, but they meet and immediately start warring. Like they, they, they immediately start a, what, what develops into a war and the war ends very quickly I, w- I would say i do really love the last 10 minutes of the movie i really like the first and last 10 minutes of the movie i think shuri's decision at the end to end the war right when it's starting i think is really awesome i really liked that a lot so much that it like for the the hour after the movie was over i was like you know it wasn't really that bad it wasn't that bad but then i thought about it more and i was like no it was like 95 percent of the movie was was really bothering me. It was just the first and last 10 minutes that I really liked. Um, but it's just really funny to me that they had Wakanda meet this like other colon. So this other group of people, they were being colonized. So they, they went into the ocean. They, they took like a, um, they, they had a shaman make them like a magic potion, um, similar to the black Panther potion. But this one made them not be able to breathe above the ground, so they had to go into the ocean, and uh, that's where they've been living for since the conquistadors came. So Wakanda has uh, a thing against colonizers, and these this other underwater tribe they have a thing against the conquistadors, and so that's how they bond. But again, like they immediately start warring, and. It's like, uh, it's oh, just kind boy. of funny to me um, how that worked out. Because the, my whole point in, in saying all that is because, like, the entire world has always been warring. And the, there's always been slaves. There's always been colonizing and all that stuff. It's always happened forever. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of years of people fighting over resources. And so it's just so silly to me when people act like they're the only ones this happened to. I'm Irish. Like Irish history is really fucked up and it's just like, I don't know. It's just so silly to me. Um, the, the, the whole attitude of the, the Wakandan is dripping with resentment. It just is. I feel like the person that you're describing who is going to, you know, talk about the colonizers and not acknowledge the history of that whole situation is a different kind of person they're the viewer and i feel like the person who wrote this it was more deliberately like i think they i don't believe that they don't know what you just uh described i don't think the people writing this uh i think that it's like i think they know that i think what they think is that the only reason africa is the way it is today is because they've had all their resources and wealth stolen from them so I think that would be the argument is like, well, if it weren't for the colonizers, we would be somewhere not like Wakanda. Wakanda is obviously sci-fi, but we would have great civilizations today if it weren't for all of the st- stolen resources. Yeah. So I, I think that's that that like I would bet that would be the director's argument is like we were set back and we've been set back. And mm-hmm. there's even a scene in the movie where so you have. The CIA in the movie is a joke. It's it's a silly little group of white people who are just trying to, like, screw everybody over. Um, but, like, I'm mm-hmm. trying to find my... So, there's a scene in Langley where they tried arresting uh, Shuri, the Wakandan princess, when she was meeting an MIT student who... Oh, that whole thing is so silly. I'm not going to get into that. But they had, there was some... 19 year old MIT student who built a machine that can detect vibranium and the CIA buys it from her, but she's so smart. She also on the side, she built an Iron Man suit, um, which is like negating 
all of the magic about the Iron Man suit was, which was the power source. The power source of the Iron Man suit was what made it so special. And they don't even know this. Like they don't think to have a, even a throwaway line like, oh, what about the arc reactor? Like, how do you power this thing? It's just like, she's like, oh, I have a suit. It took me a couple of years to build it. And then like later on in the movie, she built another one in the Wakandan labs and it's like it's a perfect Iron Man suit, and it's just so silly. Um, but like, so this the FBI and the CIA they try to kidnap Shuri and the scientist uh, in the scientist's like warehouse, and they they get away, and it's a big event, makes CIA look really silly. So they have a scene with La- in Lanely a little bit later on, and uh, that guy you mentioned who I like, Martin Freeman, the colonizer. Yeah. Um, he's the only white guy. He's the only white guy, good character in the movie. And they all call him the colonizer. And there's a joke at the end of the movie when he's handcuffed, where one of the Wakandan fighters is like, Oh, the colonizer in chains. And she's like laughing at him. And it's like, yeah. Um, what so, but, uh, so in Langley, they're like, Oh, we, we couldn't, we couldn't find the MIT scientist girl and we need that machine. And they're like, okay, well, what are you going to Martin Freeman's like, what are you going to do? And they're like, we're going to destabilize Wakanda. So like their first reaction to failing at some stupid mission that didn't make any sense was like, oh, well, I guess we'll just like send spies into Wakanda and we'll destabilize the government and steal all the resources. And it's like, why are you mad at Wakanda in the first place? And the answer is, they told us six years ago that they were going to share life-saving technologies with us. They, Martin Freeman was shot through the lower spine. It crippled him. He was paraplegic. They take uh, Black Panther, takes him to Wakanda, and they put like a magic Wakandan ball in his spine, and it heals him in moments. And so... Making, what you need. making it clear, like they have life-saving technology. They have crazy advanced medicine. And mm. the end of the first Black Panther movie was like, what's his name? Uh, you know, the Black Panther, what was his real name in the movie? Um, Ooh, I don't know. But uh, the end of the movie is him learning from Killmonger, his cousin, like you can't just be an isolationist. You have to share your technology with the world and help them. And you can't be afraid of them forever um that's gonna lead to other problems and so he you know he flies into it's like compton he flies into some ghetto in la and lands his ship and it's like okay so he's opening up the world to wakandan technology and that's the meaning of it and then you come to this movie and like that never happened they never ever did anything like that ever again they never shared any technology they never shared any vibranium and there's one scene with the UN council where they're like, um, Oh, Hey, so about that whole vibranium thing, like, are you going to ever share it with us? And Ramonda, the queen, Angela Bassett, she's like, um, she's like, it's not vibranium. I don't trust. It's you. And she's saying, you know, it's, it's, you know, the Western world that we can't trust with vibranium. And it's like, do you think that Wakanda will hold up against an arsenal of nuclear weapons? Because they have that right now. They also have somebody called Captain Marvel. They have access to well, all of the Avengers. You have Scarlet Witch. They could be like, hey, Scarlet, um, we'll drop all of your charges for terrorizing thousands of people if you go get us some vibranium. She'll be like, done. She'll be back in an hour. You have... Doctor Strange, you have the Hulk, you have all of these characters at your disposal. None of them, as far as we know, have ever attempted to do anything against Wakanda or to try and steal from Wakanda. Um, you have, th- like, the Western world is already such a threat to you, and they're not doing anything, and it's been six years. They know you have life saving technology, like, they know you can heal cancer and you can heal, like, a paraplegic like a broken spine just like nothing and you haven't shared any of that and your reason is because you don't trust them and uh 
So it's just silly. And, and, and I'm watching it knowing most people watching this are like, yeah, you can't trust them with vibranium. I think, why not? Okay. And why are you? Okay. And this is my thing with Wakanda. Why are you so trustworthy with vibranium? The, old, the last movie that you were in, you almost started a war against the world. Because Killmonger comes and you have, again, a Stone Age dictatorship, which is trial by combat. Killmonger comes in, like, kills Black Panther. Because who has a trial by combat? What year is this? Your Wakanda is so advanced and at the same time so primitive. And it's this mashing of both that doesn't make any sense. So you have trial by combat, which decides who is the ruler of the kingdom and they can do whatever they want because it is a dictatorship. So Killmonger is now in charge and all of them are doing exactly what he tells them to do. And what he wants to do is take over the world. So it's like literally 10 minutes ago, you almost went to war against the world with your vibranium technology. And then like one of the next scenes we see you and you're like, Oh, we can't trust you with vibranium. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like it's you're crazy. not you're not trustworthy with this. You have a trial by combat dictatorship. And so it's just this whole high and mighty thing. It's so silly to me the whole time. It's so silly to me. And again, it frustrates me that I know a lot of people watching this. They're not seeing it for what it is because. It just has all of this flair to it. And the presentation is all like, oh, oh, look at Wakanda. Like they're all look at all these fancy buildings and they got flying ships and they, stuff. They've got force fields the and force like fields. vibranium and stuff. But yeah. they fight with spears. But they fight with exactly. It's this mix of the two extremes that I don't understand. You're you're fighting with literal spears. They have a throwaway line in the movie about how we choose spears because um, they're graceful and also they hit hard and it's like, yeah, guns kind of hit hard. You could, you have like lasers and stuff and I don't know. So, um, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I have serious problems with Wakanda. Um, I think it's silly. I think the world building is all atrocious. It's all atrocious and it's all emotional. All of it is emotional if you, if anyone's listening and you don't agree with me, just watch, try and watch it through the lens that Wakanda isn't like the savior of the world as it's presented to be. And know that everything that Wakanda is so proudly displaying is exactly what the world is now seeing and wants. So it's, this is the other thing. It's all this, um, the, the conflicting ideas that are mashed together. And I think, they try to congeal it with emotion and I'm, I'm just right. trying to pick the two apart. So you have, you have a, they're showing off Wakanda the whole time. The whole movie is about how great it is. And at the same time, they're like, Oh, people just want this because like, what, like what reason, the reason I think the writer would give for like why the world wants it is because they're like racist and they don't want, an, an African country to thrive or something like that. And it's like, no, it's like, you know, maybe they have people that are sick and stuff and you have this crazy technology. Maybe they're also, the blip is never mentioned in the movie, but you just experienced an alien invasion that killed half of the people on earth. And maybe you want to develop new technologies to fight a possible future invasion. You know, there's so mm. many reasons that are totally, totally rational for why, America and France is trying to uh, get some of this technology. Yeah. I mean, they're just not talking about anything real in this. If they're focusing on America and France and Wakanda's in Africa, then they're focusing on the wrong issues. Right. Like if Wakanda was trying to talk about like fixing some African issues Dude. of which there are innumerable, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. would make sense because they're exactly, in the midst of it. Exactly. Um, some of the worst poverty in the world Dude, in Africa, oh. which could be helped by Wakanda. You know who is helping them more than anybody else? The Western world. The yeah. Western world. If you don't like it, just look it up. I look, I look this up every couple of years because these arguments come up with people. And it's like, look it up. Who's giving them... Who's building their schools? Who's, who's like giving them new power grids 
and like running water. Uh, it's more than any, uh, the, the, as far as private organizations go, the, the, uh, church, the, the Christian churches. And then second to that is Western nations, Western governments. And, and it's like, mm -hmm. th that's exactly the kind of thing I'm trying to point out about Wakanda is they want to, they want your focus to be on, Oh, big bad America wants, you know, life-saving technology oh gosh um but the, at the same time it's like they have what about their neighbors there's people that live all around them who don't have this technology they're isolationists and mm. and so it's just it's so silly to me and again i i don't think a lot of the people at least at least as far as people who like this movie and go on thinking the kind of weird ideas that i think this movie projects um they they just don't see this for what it is. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a story through a very strange lens. Um, it's hateful. It's a hateful lens. It it's what it is. Like I don't know. For sure. Maybe I'll put up like a little like a two minute, three minute, five minute little thing. I'll just like get all the little clips of all the the quips that they have in the movie. Yeah, it's hateful, but it's also like childish. Like it sounds so childish as you talk about this stuff. It's like, why is that the perspective? Why are they calling the only like good white character in it a colonizer the whole time? That seems so because, childish. Because it's dripping with resentment. That's why. And racism. It's like, so, that's so racist. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I, I do actually think it's racist to have your one white guy character. You just call him colonizer. Yeah, like what, like what if you had a movie was all white people? Okay, it's in it's in Ireland. It's a magical town north of Dublin, and it's all Irish people. And it's about how great they are, and they have one character in it, and they call him slave. Like it's just isn't that kind of childish? I think that is a good word for it. It's it's just facetious yeah. and facetious, yeah, and like I don't know. It's, it's like that's Bilbo Baggins. Okay, that's Bilbo. It's got, yeah, Watch your seriously, mouth. show some respect. <laughs> um, oh, so, okay. They have this whole subplot in Haiti, they call it. It's, it's Haiti. I'm sure we say it wrong. I'm sure they say it correctly. I'm, I'm not even joking. It probably is Haiti. The, the way, they said it so many times in the movie. I was like, all right, I get it. I get it. We say it wrong because we're dumb English speaking Americans. We don't say Haiti, right? But they have a subplot in Haiti, and it's like, do you know what happened to Haiti? Do you know how vicious their revolution was? They had a revolution in Haiti, and they slaughtered all the white people. They murdered the white men, women, and children. It was brutal. It was brutal. And in the movie, it's just like, it's like they're uh, like going to the Bahamas. It's like, oh, we're going to go off to Haiti and like that's where we go chill. And it's just so silly to me. It's so silly. Mm -hmm. Haiti was consumed by corruption. And I, I'm not like I, I'm sure I'm confident that the situation, this, um, the circumstances that led to that violent revolution were horrendous. And I'm not saying that was how it should have been, but I'm saying what happened after their revolution where they killed all the white people and dr drove all the other white people away, that it was consumed by corruption. And so Haiti mm. has never grown. It's never recovered. And it, it, it's in a horrible situation. And it's like, that's not white people's fault. I'm sorry. You don't know any, anything about Haiti if you think it's white people's fault. Because that's just not what happened. The, the Haiti story is so insane. So it was so weird. Every time it came up, I'm like, really? Of all the countries. Of all the countries. No, I don't think that this writer uh, knows. I, 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 it would be, I, I wouldn't understand why he would choose of all the countries to choose Haiti. It's like they're specifically or intentionally trying to like confuse history. Yeah. I, it's a mix of not knowing, not understanding, and then like rewriting. Like right now there's a big thing going on about Egypt being run and built ancient Egypt being run and built by African American, African Americans, uh, African people, like, like sub Saharan African people. Like dark. Huh. Yeah, I've heard that, but I don't know. That's a big thing. Like yeah. CNN just had an article. Because I saw it, it popped up a few times. And then CNN was like, oh, hey, did everybody know? They just figured out that 
Egypt, ancient Egypt, the 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 span of Egyptian history that anyone cares about, it was all it was black people who were running it. Uh, they have a show mm. coming out about um, Cleopatra, and it's a black woman. Mm. I was like, I. Mm, I mean, uh, Cleo does sound like a black woman. Cleo, I will say that. Yeah, I think they were like Italian. Mm. Like, I, like literally, mm-hmm. I think that was that was the thing. I think either they went up to Italy or vice versa or something. I think I think they were like Italian people. I don't know. I don't know. I I haven't looked. That's been a while. I just saw this these like things popping up here and there about Egyptian history, how we got it all wrong and stuff. But um, I gotta get going to uh, practice soon. Oh yeah, for sure. What else uh, about Wakanda? Like, what can we? (laughs) How can we wrap this up? Okay. Well, I would say so. I have a whole list of plot points. So besides the the thematic stuff, there were a lot of problems with the plot. I literally have two pages of notes line by line uh and 70% of it is just plot points uh so I'm not gonna get into any of that um but like maybe one more theme that I'll touch upon and then we can close up like yeah um so the first Black Panther is about the father and son and it's about it's a, a lot like Lion King where you have Loss of the father. Son's trying to grow up without him. He has guilt. He has like a feeling of um, responsibility that was put on him. And it's about moving through that and becoming your own man Mm -hmm. um, in a way that would make your father proud. But also you have to be proud of your own actions and your own self. So it's like that development. Um, Really interesting theme. And there's a lot of stories that we see that in. This one is about the mother-daughter relationship. And maybe this is something I'll look for more if I rewatch someday, but like, I don't think they did much with it. I think it was mm. all, I really like Shuri. I, I really like the actress. I think she's really talented. I think she's charming. I think her character is really well written just as far as like com, a, a nice blend of confidence with like, still learning and still growing and like all that stuff. It's really good to see. I I just think that her character developed primarily on her own accord. And she, there is a moment with that she shares with her mother that comes into play later. And it's a really touching moment. Um, But I, I, so I would say that I would say that the first one's more about father, son. This one's more about mother, daughter. And I, I think it does have in that respect, I think Shuri's story in this, um, is really touching, and I think she makes a decision okay. towards the end of the movie that I'm, I was like, hell yeah, like, phew, good stuff. Like, I, I'll be very happy to see her uh, in future, you know, because she'll be one, she'll be in the Avengers and all that stuff. She'll be in all the stuff. So, okay. Um, as far as her as a character, maybe I should have mentioned this in the beginning uh, of this, but like, I really like her as a character. So my issues are with Wakanda, like, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I think oh, the yeah. I think the government is is I think it's I think they're horrible horrible people <laughs> like just all the stuff. She's so different from them. So maybe maybe they're this is a long game. And they're like gonna be going into because Shuri is queen now, and so I think maybe she'll be bringing some change, um, and we'll see what happens. But. Um, she seems to be along for the ride though, with all the stuff that's going on as far as the, the public relations goes, like she seems to just be okay with it. So oh, I don't yeah. know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Mm. Um, she might even be an anchor in the universe now. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have so many, so many things here, but yeah. Um, the villain, no more, his motivations are garbage. The aspect ratio, one ninety. IMAX enhanced it was like why why did you do that I didn't know it was an option on Disney to turn that off I wish I did so if you do watch it turn off IMAX enhanced because the aspect ratio just keeps changing some scenes from oh. shot to shot which is really weird um, and uh, yeah Shuri had Shuri I don't know how far it went but I think she was like almost fired from this movie that that was the rumors wow. where she was almost fired because she wouldn't get the vaccine dude you have a character your lead in this movie, you oh almost, you, uh, it's, I, I won't say they almost fired her because I, I think they were way too far into this to do that. But like, 
the there was a I would I know this is true. So I don't know if that part is true in the the as far as the production goes is like almost replacing her. But I do know I was there. I saw it. The fans of this movie, the people who were looking forward to this movie were saying they were writing articles about it. They were sharing it. They were commenting on it. Get rid of her. She's she's killing grandma. She won't get the vaccine. We all got the vaccine. She thinks she's so special. She doesn't have to get it. Everyone else has to get it for her. Blah, blah, blah. And then the movie comes out and it's like, oh, we love Letitia. She's our girl. And it's just like, OK, yeah, OK. Fake. Yeah. Yeah. No. I like her. I, I like her. Uh, I haven't seen interviews and stuff with her. But just from that, like I saw a couple quotes. So she was just like, yeah, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Fuck off. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, good for you. Um, so, I don't know. It's just like, you know, just a little thing to throw in there. But, Love uh, to see the rebel. Yeah, me too. Me too. So, um, you know, it's something uh, something to think about. Um, but uh, that's, I guess that's all I have to say about this. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you, man. If you want to keep going, I can always say bye mm. and let you keep rolling on it. <clears throat> Honestly, no, the other stuff was just little plot stuff. Little things like, why didn't they blow the horn when they first got it? Why mm. did they wait to get back to Wakanda to, to be like, D- can we track Shuri? And the AI's like, uh, yeah. And it's like, what? You didn't think when she got kidnapped, you weren't like, wait, she's got a tracker. Where is she? I, I'm like literally right next to her right now. They fly all the way back to Wakanda. And then Queen Ramonda is like, Hey, AI, um, can we track Shuri? And again, yeah, the AI is like, yeah. <laughs> so little stuff like that. There was a lot of stuff like that. We were like, why? Why? I was thinking about Spears so much. I forgot that we yeah. were technologically advanced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, anyways, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that'll be it for, for this time. I guess we're going to wrap it up here. And like, I like what I've said. If you have any recommendations or you want us to watch anything or comment on anything, just let us know. Mm. Yeah, and if we'll anyone feels led to write letters to Marvel about getting their shit together, yes. you know, feel free. Yeah, um, you could share our video. I don't care. I don't yeah, care. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Please share it with them. You know, them know. that would be interesting. I, I would, uh, I know it would be different if we were like sitting with Ryan Coogler right now, the, the writer director of this, I know it would be very different. All right. I understand. Like we're being kind of dicks about this, but $500 million. It was $500 million. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So give us a break. All right. I don't have socks on. I'm going up against a movie that costs $500 million. Like it's got some problems. You can't argue with some of them. Some of them you could, that would be interesting. Leave a comment, leave a comment. All right. Comment below. What did you say last time? Like tickle the subscribe or something? Tickle that subscribe. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Poke that like. Poke that like. That's what it was. Poke that like. Tickle that subscribe button. <laughs> Maybe I'll feel it. If I feel any tickles later, I'll know it was you. But. Nice. All right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. We'll see you next time. And until then, use your head. Oh. Do-do.